So if you clicked on this video, then you know now why I have been missing for two weeks. Um, or I don't know, maybe you didn't even notice. But anyway, I had an upper blepharoplasty and I had this done on April 18th. Today is May 5th. It's been about 17 days. And so I'm still very much in the healing process. My scars are still very, very pink, very raised and kind of lumpy and stuff like that. Like I said, it's only been 17 days. So I do have a little bit of bronzer like on my eyelids to kind of camouflage that. So, but I now have visible eyelid space and I don't know, you know, unless you caught one of my get ready with me's or maybe a skincare video, maybe you didn't notice that my eyelids or the skin up above the crease was just sitting on my eyelash line and it was driving me crazy. And if you've been with my channel for a while and you're pretty regular at, you know, watching my videos, then you know I've griped about it, you know, so often um, on my channel. And so I finally did something about it. So we are gonna start with some before and afters because I know that's what most people wanna see, especially if you're new to this channel and this is the first video you're seeing because maybe you're considering um, a blepharoplasty or maybe just like seeing, you know, before and afters of people who've had it, I don't know. But anyway, so I'm gonna start with some before and afters and then we're just gonna kind of rewind to consultation day and operation day and then the healing process and all that good stuff. Um, I'm also gonna show you a bunch of pictures of me like from age 10 and up and just how my kind of eyes progressed to the way that they were on operation day and um, and you know why I got them done. And, um, and so yeah, let's go ahead and jump in and we'll start with some before and afters. Okay, so I'm gonna put up some pictures. Let me scoot over, because I'm gonna try to put them up right here on the screen. Um, these pictures were taken on operation day. Um, you know, they have you come with no makeup, no nothing on, you know, they don't want anything to get into your incisions, obviously. So, um, so these are the pictures. Now, on this day, my eyelids were both on my eyelash line. However, they were not always like that. Um, my eyes have always been asymmetrical and they still are. Like this eyebrow is so much stronger and it raises up higher. This one sits a little bit lower. This one has always shown more eyelid space and this one has always been, you know, more hooded. And they still are like that. Um, and I am, you know, I'm not sure if this one is gonna correct itself. Like it's in the inside corner right there that my scarring is really lumpy and I feel like my skin is getting caught up on it. I think that once it flattens out and the, um, and the scar you know, softens up, I feel like that skin is going to slip down to where it is on this side. Even if it doesn't, the improvement is so huge to me. I feel like it's real subtle, like my husband He's like, you look exactly the same to me, which I do not. My eyelids, my skin up above the crease were sitting on my eyelash line. You, I could see no eyelid space whatsoever on some days. On some days, this one would want to behave and show a little eyelid space. This one never did. It was just totally dead. I look so angry on this side of my face and like semi-pleasant on that side. So, um, but it's the, the difference is huge to me. And, you know, in a perfect world, it would be completely symmetrical, of course, but even with the asymmetry, because everybody's asymmetrical. Everybody has one eyebrow that sits a little bit higher, one eyelid that shows a little bit more space. You might have a nostril, I think I do, have a nostril that's a little bit bigger than the other. Um, everything, I talk out of this side of my mouth more. Um, most people are pretty asymmetrical. So, um, but the improvement is so huge to me but I still look like myself and that was the biggest thing. So anyway, on operation day, this is what my eyes looked like. They were looking so, so terrible, which I'm kind of glad, um, but I'm gonna put up some pictures here on what they would look like some other days. Like, like I said, some days I would still have one visible eyelid and not the other. And so, like I said, I would put on so much eyeshadow to try to camouflage that. And I think I did a pretty good job of it. Um, I don't think most people knew that my eyes were so uneven like that um, because of all the eyeshadow. I don't know how great it looked, you know, with all the eyeshadow and I cannot wait to start playing in makeup. I'm not, I'm gonna be doing a lot of get ready with me as I have a feeling. Now here is a before and after. This was the day before my surgery. And then this is, this was like two days ago or something like that. And this is the improvement. Like I said, to most people, even my husband and my daughter, 
they are like, you look just as good as you ever did. You know, they're so sweet. I feel, my husband is so, so forgiving of everything. Anything that I've ever fixed on myself, he's like, I don't notice a difference. He acts like, he acts like I look exactly the same, which I totally don't. But I'm glad. I'm glad that he thinks that because that's his biggest fear is that I'm going to change my appearance so much and I'm not going to look like myself. Okay, so now I'm going to put up some pictures of just how my eyes kind of progressed over the years. As you can see in the picture where I'm 12 years old, y'all, please try to ignore the haircut. It was 1985. Um, if you did not have that haircut, then you simply were not cool. <laughs> Like you had to have feathers, right? And maybe a little mullet looking stuff. I don't know. Or maybe it was just me. I don't know. But anyway, um, your feathers weren't great unless they practically met in the back. And so anyway, I had some really good feathers going on there. But when I look at this picture, it just cracks me up because I look like I have such an adult hairdo on such a kid's face. But if you see my eyes in that one specifically, that's kind of the way that they look now. That's how much eyelid space that I have. Um, in all the other pictures, it seems, you know, my eyes were just very naturally hooded. And I love hooded eyes. I did not want anything other than hooded eyes. I'm gonna tell you that, you know, what I told him during consultation day. But I just wanted you to see, you know, how, um, you know, at 10 years old, very, very hooded, 12, you could see the eyelid space. And then just from that point forward, it's just kind of like got smaller, 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 smaller until I lost the volume, which was holding up the skin. And then the skin, you know, just kind of fell down onto my eyes. And one thing I did want to say is that on this eye, the one that shows more space, eyelid space, this one kind of rippled down. This one fell down really, really smoothly, but all the way down to my eyelash line. So it made eyeshadow application so difficult. I would try to start, let me scoot back in the middle. I would always try to start with a certain look and next thing you know, I had my eyeshadow all the way up to my eyebrows because of the unevenness in the way that they were falling. It was just, uh, it just became so disheartening and it was so frustrating. And it was making me really, you know, sad. And you guys know, I am not against filler or Botox or plastic surgery or anything like that. Filler is my favorite. No, 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 not anymore. Plastic surgery is my favorite. But up until, up until then, filler was the favorite. Botox, I can take or leave. So anyway, um, okay, so now let's go to consultation day. Okay, so first of all, whenever I went in for my consultation, I actually um, went in, I actually had two surgeries done on surgery day. I had my upper eyelids done and then I had a breast implant exchange and I did go a little bit bigger. Um, you're not gonna notice probably that I went bigger because um, cause I was always wearing a padded bra. And so now without a padded bra, I look like I did with a padded bra, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, I did have a breast implant exchange. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because um, this video would be way too long. So we're just gonna go ahead and save that for another video. So we're just gonna only talk about my, my eyelids. Now I know a lot of people right off the bat wanna know about pricing. Now, because I did get two surgeries done in the same day, um, I, I did get some discounts. I only paid for one anesthesia fee and then I only paid for um, one facility fee. And then he did give me a discount because I had two surgeries on the same day because I did two surgeries with him. And so um, so altogether it was about $10,000, but broken up separately, like if you were only going to get your upper eyelids done, I think it would be between four and $5,000. Um, because you know you do pay for the surgery, but then you pay for the facility fee and then the anesthesia. Now, um, y'all, my doctor, I'm gonna put a picture of him up right here. His name's Dr. Keith Rose. He is so incredible, um, so, so patient, listened to everything that I said. I was not rushed at all. Went through all the pricing with me, um, showed me you know some before and afters and stuff. And uh, he just has the best bedside manners. And um, and he and my husband got along so, so good. It was so funny. At one point I was like, are they having a bromance over there? Like they are so, so much alike in pretty much every way. It was just kind of crazy, um, but they got along really well. Anyway, whenever I was asking him about pricing, he did mention that 
he's one of the higher priced, you know, surgeons in my area. I live in Corpus Christi, Texas. I live in a small, smaller city. And um, so things are, whenever you live in a smaller city, things are going to be a little bit less expensive. I loved that he actually said that because it made me know that he's so confident in his work that he's willing to charge a little bit more. And so, um, so I was happy I was happy to to go with him. Now, the way that I found him is that my mother-in-law, she goes, she lives in McAllen, Texas, and that's south of here. And she goes to a hairdresser and her hairdresser had told her that he works on several women who had gotten plastic surgery done through Dr. Keith Rose. And so she told me about that. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna go check him out. And, um, and so the reason, the absolute number one reason that I went with him, and this is going to sound so funny. So right after I decided that I was going to get a consultation with him and I already had the consultation, I came home and I like stalked him a little bit because, um, I wanted to get on Google and see if there were any bad reviews, you know, because I like when you can get, when you can read Google reviews because, um, the, the doctor or whoever, whatever company, they don't, they can't manipulate those reviews. Like they can't get rid of the bad ones or anything like that. And so, so I wanted to see if there were any negative reviews on him. There were none. There were no negative reviews on him whatsoever. They were all super, super positive. Then all of a sudden it said Dr. Keith Rose and it was a YouTube video. And I was like, oh, how cool, you know, does he make YouTube videos? So I went on it and literally y'all, he was, a guest pastor at a local church here in Corpus. And I was like, I, done. That's who I'm going with 100%. I listened to his sermon and I was like, how cool is that? That the guy who's going to do my surgery, who's a plastic surgeon, is also very, very Christian and just crazy about his wife. Like the way that he talks about his wife is just like how every woman would want their husband to talk about them, you know, um, it was just so cool. He was just, so everything just kind of, um, kind of fell into place. And I was like, I'm definitely going with this doctor. So anyway, one thing that I did tell him during the consultation, and I was very, very specific is that I have always had hooded eyes my entire life. And I, did not because originally i was thinking do i want to get a brow lift because i was so afraid that they would take off too much skin and then i would be left with a ton of visible eyelid space that i've never had before and 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 it would freak me out um now one thing about getting surgery especially eyelid surgery is i feel like you really have to get to the point where you're so upset with the way that things look now that you're willing to take the risk of looking very different and I was willing to take that risk, but in a perfect world, I was like, in a perfect world, I would love to still have hooded eyes because I've always had hooded eyes. Um, but I just didn't like the extra skin that was laying over my crease line and, you know, laying on my eyelashes. Like I didn't want, I didn't want all of a sudden my crease to be way up high or, you know, that there wasn't going to be enough skin or anything to kind of at least lay on the crease so that at least I would still have eyes similar to the eyes that I've seen my entire life. Right as I was telling him this, and I was trying to be as um, tactful as possible because I don't want to be insulting to anybody, you know, obviously, especially somebody who's going to be working on your face. He stopped me like right in the middle of what I was saying. And he's like, I am not in the business of making women's eyes look hollow. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, thank you. I'm so glad that he kind of filled in the blanks for me because I didn't want to say that because I didn't want to be offensive to him. You know what I mean? But he stopped me and then he showed me some before and afters. And it's funny because I had already looked at a lot of before and afters and the ones that I liked the most were usually men. Um, because men usually start out, you know, I feel like, I feel like less, I don't know if more or less women have hooded eyes or not, but men typically have hooded eyes more commonly than women. So the men's pictures that I saw were their you know, skin was either on the lash line or even hanging over a little bit after surgery, they look like mine do now. And I was like, that's what I want. That's what I want. Like, I don't want any more and I don't want any less, you know? So, um, so anyway, I was happy that he showed me some before and afters of people who had similar eyes to me and, and then what their afters look like. So I was very, 
I was very sure that he was the doctor that I wanted to go with. So I literally went home, talked to my husband and set up the consultation immediately. Cause at first we weren't sure. We just wanted to get some pricing on the breast implant exchange. Cause we know that that's going to have to happen eventually. And neither one of us wanted me to be a lot older, you know, having surgery and stuff. So we decided to do both at the same time. So anyway, that is what happened in consultation. Literally they set up the appointment and it was a month, not even a month later that I was <laughs> having surgery. So surgery day, you go in, you're not allowed to wear any makeup or any skincare or anything, no hair care, no nothing. And, um, and you know, cause they need you to be as clean as possible. They don't want any bacteria getting into the sutures and stuff like that. So anyway, um, go in, no makeup, no anything. They take a bunch of pictures because you know, they're going to, um, they need some before pictures. And then I met with the surgeon. That's when my husband was there. Um, he didn't meet the surgeon during consultation and stuff. He met him on surgery day. And, um, and then we talked about what we're going to do with my chest and then also my eyes. And one thing that he said, which was so interesting to me, because I was like, are you going to draw on my eyes and stuff? Cause I always see videos where they just draw, you know, all these lines and stuff on the eyes. And he's like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And he like scooted up to me and he put one dot here, a dot here, a dot here. He put like three dots on each eye and that was it. So I was like, so you're not gonna draw on my eyes? And he's like, no, the way that I do it is that once you're on the table, I pull up on the skin and obviously they want to make sure that your eyes is still able to close and they wanna make sure that they don't um, compromise your eyebrows, you know? They don't wanna pull your eyebrows down and they don't wanna pull your eyelids up because then you might not be able to close your eyes or then you might have dropped eyebrows or something like that. So, um, so he pulls up on the skin and that's how he decides how much to take off. Now, I thought that was so interesting, but then there was a part of me that was a little scared because I was like, everything that I've ever seen, you see them, you know, draw all these shapes and stuff on people's eyes. So, um, he didn't do it that way. So anyway, um, I literally, the eye surgery, I think takes about 45 minutes, maybe not even that long. Um, I, my husband came and picked me up like two hours later and I went totally under. Originally, I was just going to go under local sedation with a drip, but then they said, you know, just because we're doing your eyes and sometimes, you know, if you're just under local sedation, you might cough or move or something like that. And we don't want any mistakes. So I was like, okay, I'll go, I'll go totally under. Now I did want to mention that before I even had the surgery, I had to get all this testing done. Like they want to make sure you're in tip top shape before they go performing surgery on you. So I had to um, get some blood work done. I had to have an EKG. I had to get some chest x-rays. And then I also had to get a cardiac approval because I have something called right bundle branch block and it's a heart condition. And, and anytime I have surgery, like when I had surgery on my knee, I had to get a, a cardiac approval to make sure that, you know, they don't want any blood on their hands, basically. You know, they don't want you dying on the table because you didn't tell them about something. So anyway, I told them that I had the right bundle branch block. They asked me to get a cardiac approval. So I had to get all this testing done before I even had the surgery. And, um, and so anyway, I'm, I'm here alive, you know, so I made it. So anyway, so I go into surgery. My husband picks me up two hours later and I'm going to show you this video of me. <laughs> I don't know if I want to show it or not. I was so loopy. I could not even keep my eyes open. It's like I could feel something inside of my eyes. I don't know if they sh put shields or something on your eyeballs, but it felt like you know, when you could tell something was there. So I just kept rolling them and rolling them and I could not see straight or anything. So here is that video. Okay, so I can't see anything right now. <laughs> My eyes are really, really blurry. And um, I, there's a guy walking right there. I could see figures. Um, I'm very loopy very nauseous. We literally just left the surgeon's office and wow. I'm, I'm, my chest is more in pain. My eyes, I don't feel really any pain at all except for 
the blurriness. I cannot see, I can't see myself at all. Now I'm gonna show you a video that was just a few hours later that day or several hours later, and same day, same, you know, surgery day, and just kind of showing you what things, you know, look like at the moment. Okay, so here we are, same day, and um, I just had my surgery this morning at around, I guess like 10 o'clock or so, and then I think it's like six o'clock in the evening right now. And I took a really good nap when I got home, and then, um, and I took some nausea medication and some pain medication, and I don't feel any pain whatsoever. My follow-up appointment is actually tomorrow, which is crazy, because I had two surgeries. You would think, I don't know, but I feel fine. So I've got a really high pain tolerance also. So yeah, this is where we're at right now. Now, the stitching and stuff, it does look kind of jagged, and it might look a little uneven, but, um, but I feel like I can tell that the outcome is just gonna look so perfect. Um, yeah, I think so. So anyway. Now I did wanna say also that um, they did prescribe me some Percocet and um, they, they also prescribed me some Valium, which I never took the Valium, but I did take the Percocet mainly for the breast um, implant exchange. This wasn't too um, painful at all. It was just very, it was an easy um, surgery. The only part that the only time that I felt like I really needed the Percocet for my eyes was because I think it was day three or four, they really started itching out of control and I just wanted to rip my eyeballs out. So um, so anyway, I'm gonna show you these videos of you know what it was like, I think from day one till four, so. Okay, this is day three. This is where we are at. Um, I look pretty banged up right now. I still have a ton of swelling um, on my like mobile eyelid, but also up above the stitches. This is what the stitches look like. They look, you know, kind of jagged, very swollen. Um, there's even parts of the stitches, like right around the stitches where the skin kind of bumps up a little bit. And I've already been warned that that was gonna happen and it's completely normal and that it actually heals down really nicely when that happens. Um, these, the stitches come out to here. It's funny because the stitches are not, I always thought that like the stitches create the crease, but it's not really the case. They do put them near the crease, but the, it's not like whenever I rest my eyes, it is where the stitches are because they're a little bit different on both sides. So it's really interesting. Anyway, um, I know the process. I know that, you know, I'm gonna look a little crazy like this for at least two weeks. Um, anytime I get filler, I get really bruised and I know that it's about two weeks till everything kind of settles in and stuff. So you just kind of have to be, you know, really, really patient. And um, yeah, so this is what things look like right now. Very different, you know, I don't, my eye, you know, my skin is not hanging and sitting on my eyelash line. Um, I think it's definitely gonna come down, you know, still, quite a bit further, but um, but hopefully not all the way down to my eyelash line. So anyway, this is where we're at, day three. Okay, so here I am, day four. And um, let's see, this is the 22nd, and I had this done on the 18th. Yeah, and so this is day four. And I have to say, y'all, last night I could not sleep because my eyes itched so, so bad. I mean, I wanted to just rip them out. So anyway, this is day four, and this is when they say that you kind of start to turn a corner and, you know, the swelling and things start to subside. It, I still look pretty banged up right now. Um, this is what the stitches look like when I'm closed. Um, I'm a little baby bit concerned. Like, I feel like I'm seeing a little bit more eyelid space on this eye than this one. I hope that when it all heals down that it's not the case. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, maybe I'll put up a picture of my eyes before, but this eye was like totally dead, like onto my eyelash line. And this eye, I was still showing some eyelid space. So, you know, it's obviously a lot more even now, but you know, whenever you have surgery, you want them to be like perfectly even, right? But I don't, I don't know if that is even a possibility. But so anyway, here, here we are at day four. I'm actually really, really happy so far. I'm not used to seeing this much eyelid space on me. I know that I'm gonna lose some of it 
as I continue to heal. Like I said, this is only day four. They say that I think day 14 is when you kind of look like what you're gonna end up looking like. So anyway, that's it. Now, the next video that I'm gonna be showing you is when I got my stitches taken out. And um, it kind of explains why I think that this one um, is scarred a little bit more at the moment and why I feel like my skin is getting hung up on kind of the bubbling and stuff of the scar right in here. Um, so yeah, that this video is definitely gonna explain that. So here we are, this is day six. I just got my stitches out. And let me just say, it was painful. It, it was tolerable and slightly painful. The, re the only reason I think it was painful is because she said that obviously I'm healing really fast. And so um, my skin had actually grown over the stitches. So she had to like remove a bunch of skin that had kind of grown over, but it was still like kind of a scab. So she had to remove a lot of the scabs, especially on this eye. So this one is, you know, obviously gonna be a little bit more swollen, but um, this, is, this is where my stitches were and now they're not. <laughs> and so anyway, this is where we're at. I'm about to go clean them up and put some ointment on them. And I cannot wait to see, you know, the final, final results. Okay, so today is day seven and I got my stitches out yesterday and y'all saw how angry they looked. And look at today. I mean, I have a lot of ointment on them right now. I'm so diligent with this ointment. I'm not about to miss a day because I don't want, you know, I tend to scar pretty easily. Um, you know, I had abdominal surgery back when I was real young and I keloided. So if you know what a keloid is, it's when your body goes into kind of overdrive to heal itself. And sometimes the scar can appear really raised and that's what happened. And then I had to have reconstructive surgery to take that keloid off. And so, um, and it's right down the middle of my stomach. Um, so anyway, I, so I'm so diligent with this ointment. And um, so the healing is supposed to be a little bit slower whenever you're using ointment like that. Like if I let it scab over, I feel like it would have healed a long time ago. But anyway, um, I'm just, I'm loving it so far. Every day it just gets a little bit better and everything starts to look a little bit more even and I think I'm just getting used to looking at myself with eyelids again. I mean, it's been so long. Like, I mean, since I was like 20 or something like that, you know, really young. Okay, so this is day, what is it? I think it's day 10. I had this done on the 18th and today is the 28th. Yeah, it is, it's the 28th. So it's been 10 days. Y'all, I cannot believe how quickly your eyes heal after upper eyelid surgery. I would think that it would take so much longer than this. Now, I do have still um, quite a bit of, you know, scar tissue and stuff like that that needs to settle down and kind of even out, especially in this inside corner. And I feel like my eye is getting a little bit hung up on it right there on the inside, like under this where the stitches were, the the skin is just kind of raised. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's just kind of raised. And so I feel like my eyes getting hung up on it. And right now this one's my favorite eye. I love them both and I'm just so happy that I did it and I got it done. Um, right now they're a little bit uneven, like this one's showing a little bit more eyelid space in this inside corner than this one but I'm just so happy. Like I'm literally wearing a little bit of mascara. I didn't even curl my eyelashes and I feel just infinitely more confident than prior to having this done because this eye was so bad that it was just sitting on my eyelash line, literally like pushing my eyelashes down on the outside, on the outside corners to where y'all are gonna think I'm crazy. I literally like plucked my eyelashes on the outside corners because they would just get turned down anyway and so i was just like what's the point of even having them and um they're growing back fortunately but anyway um so yeah this is what things look like right now okay so that's about all of the videos and pictures that i have from just you know the day-to-day -day progression and healing process but anyway um Right now, they say that you can start wearing eye makeup 
Um, they told me at three weeks. Now she actually told me that I could use a little bit of concealer to camouflage, you know, after everything closed up. Um, but she said not, not eyeshadow, not until we usually like, you know, to wait till week three. I jumped the gun just a little bit. You know, I did, like I said, put on a little bit of bronzer because my eyelids were so white and, um, I don't know. I just kind of wanted them to look kind of like how they're going to eventually look when they're all healed so that you guys could see. Um, so right after this video, I'm actually going to go clean them up and, and then put, you know, ointment and stuff like that. Now I already stopped the ointment. I think after, after they take the sutures out, they say that you can stop the bacteria, bacterial ointment, whatever it's called. And, um, and you could just start using aquaphor or vitamin E or something like that. And so I actually have been using this right here and it is called scar away. It is 100% silicone gel. And so after I clean the area really well, I might put a little baby bit of coconut oil on it and then I'll top it off with this stuff right here. And I feel like it's just, it's really good at just protecting the scars and keeping them, you know, moist so that, you know, if you, if you sleep under a fan or something like that, you don't want everything to dry out. You want to keep it moist because scars heal best when they're kept moist. I feel like it takes a lot longer, but I, I think that they, they heal better, you know, and that's definitely what I want. I was a little bit worried that my eyes would keloid and they said, you know, it's not real common for the skin on our eyes to keloid. So, but even if it did, it was still a chance I was willing to take. Like that's how unhappy I had gotten with my upper eyelids. So anyway, um, I, I like wearing this little makeup, especially from day to day. However, I'm still going to wear some eyeshadow because I like how I look with the contrast. It's been so long since I've worn this little makeup. And at this point, my eyelashes, like when I was younger, I had such thick, thick eyelashes. Now they're so thin. They want to turn in all different directions. And they, you know, then it almost looks like I'm not wearing any makeup. So I'm definitely still going to wear um, eyeshadow. I'm just going to use a little bit lighter shades. And um, I'm just going to, I'm going to have fun with um, trying to do some looks. I don't know. I, I like an all one color eyeshadow look. It's just my favorite. Anytime I have tried other people's techniques um, to camouflage sagging skin and hooding, hooded eyes, it never, it might look okay in a video with the lighting and stuff like that. Once I get out in the daylight, it doesn't look the same. It doesn't camouflage it like it does in my videos, like prior to having the surgery. You know, um, I thought, ooh, it looks pretty good. And then I get outside and I'm like, God, you could totally see that my eyelids are still so saggy. Now it just, it, it almost looked like it was accentuated because it had light colors on the parts that look the worst. But you know, I did wanna say something. My husband actually gave me the okay to do this over a year ago. And um, I had already, I told my younger sister and I told Anne, Beauty by Anne Marie. She, I know she hasn't made a video in a long time, but she and I still email each other all the time. We still communicate all the time. And she was the only person outside of my family that knew that I had gotten this done. I had sent her pictures and stuff like progressively as I was, as I was healing. So a long time ago, like a year ago, I think I told her that my husband had given me the okay. And I was just so worried. I was so worried about doing it. My biggest fear was that I was going to look so different. Like I said, you have to get to the point where you're just so frustrated that you're like, even if I look different, I'll be fine with it. Um, and then I was thinking, should I just do an eyebrow lift? You know, will that give me enough so that at least it gets that skin off my eyelash line? And I just didn't know until I went into the consultation, but, um, you know, and that is something that you should, cause I know somebody's going to leave me a comment going, I can't believe you had to ask for permission or you had to wait for an okay or whatever. These, this is a big deal. I mean, we're talking surgery that could possibly change, you know, the entire look of my face. And, um, and it's something that I definitely would want to discuss. I would want my husband to discuss it with me, you know, and say like, would you be okay with that? And, you know, and so anyway, and it's expensive. It's not cheap. I'm not just going to go blowing 10 grand on myself when we have, you know, a family and bills and all this stuff. So I need to make, I needed to make sure since my husband is the main breadwinner in our family, you know, I needed to make sure that this is something that we could afford and it wasn't going to take away from you know, anybody else, you know what I mean? So anyway, um, 
So he, he gave me the okay like a year ago and I have been dragging my feet all this time just thinking, should I, should I? What if I look so different? What if I'm so upset? And then I just finally thought it's only gonna get worse. So let's just go ahead and do it. So I just finally did it and I'm so glad that I did and I'm so happy with the results. And um, so that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you're all having a fantastic weekend and um, and I hope nobody gets mad at me for doing this. <laughs> I don't know why you would. Um, I'm so transparent, you know, I tell y'all, I self-deprecate. I tell you every time I get anything done, like if I get filler or Botox, I think one time I might've gotten Botox and I didn't say anything. And I, and I felt so guilty about it. Like, should I tell them, you know? But um, it, typically I just go ahead and say it. But, um, and anyway, so you guys know that I've done all those things. You know, I don't wanna act like, oh, look at all this improvement, it's all skincare, when it definitely is not. Nothing could have taken the skin off my eyelash line. No skincare in the world. So, okay, that's it. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend and, um, and hopefully I will see you back here next week.